Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you might have seen some of the short videos, I've been working on this Cicada lure on and off for quite a while. And finally I think I'm done. So in this video I'm gonna show you guys in more details. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Goya. And part of this channel focuses on lure making using 3D printers and 3D modeling tools such as Fusion 360. And if you're not familiar with uh, Fusion 360, I have a tutorial video about the features that you might need to uh, design your lures. I also have some design videos that show you how I go about some specific design. So please check them out. All right, let's get back to the Cicada lure. So for this lure, first I will draw the main body. So again, I'm using a pipe form. So first I draw a line and turn that into a pipe form. Here I make the tail section smaller. So it will be closer to the final form I wanted. Now just the game of adjustment. For the back, I'm using the quad ball. Sculpting quad ball forms and pipe forms are similar, it's just the starting shapes are different. Similarly, I'm using quad ball for the head and the eye. At this point, I'm not to worry about the other eye because uh, later on I will use mirror to duplicate the other side. To add more details, I split the back into two parts. Also add a fillet between this joint. And this leaves a bigger gap that doesn't look right, so I move the back forward a little bit to close the gap like so. Here I also add more details on the front portion of the back. So first I draw some lines and then project the back and um, I create some pipe forms using those projected lines and then reshape those pipe forms reposition them and merge them down to the bottom object and then I add a fillet around those intersecting lines. I have a video on how to create surface detail. I will leave the link in the description section. For the legs, First I draw the outlines on the XZ plane and then project to the bottom along the vector which is the Y axis. I then create the pipe forms from those projected lines. And here is some tip, when you create the pipe form, do not create one for the entire band of the leg but just create piece by piece. That way you can avoid the problem at the elbow area. And this part is unnecessary, but just for the convenience. Here I'm adding a tree structure to hold all the leg pieces together. So in the future, when I select the legs, I just need to select one object. And now the segment at the body. So first I draw some lines and then use those lines to split the body into segments. Once I have the segments, I use the chamfer to cut the indent around the segment. 
I didn't use fillet because I want to have a longer uh, cut along the surface, but shallower cut into the body. And fillet cannot do that. But with chamfer, we can do that with non-equal distance, but it will leave an edge. So I then use the fillet to further smooth out that edge. I also add another small fillet at the other end of the segment. Now this part is a little bit tricky. So I want to add some cut lines on this segmented body. First, I need to create a cut tool like this. To create this tool, I split the body using a couple of lines. Then I create the pipe forms along the split edges. For the curvy part that connects the pipe forms, I draw a 3D line on the surface and then turn that into a pipe form. Finally, I combine the pipe form cut tool to the body using the cut operation. Maybe I could have created a cut tool before making the segments. So the shape that I'm working with would be simpler and the cut tool creation would have been easier. But uh, anyways, this is how I did it. Here I'm adding the mirroring part, but you can do it in the end. Because I plan to use different materials for the leg insert, I need to cut out some space for that. So basically the cut tool is just some pipe forms based on the surface projection of the leg outlines and with a diameter smaller than the one that I used for the legs. I do have to move the cut tools a little bit so the cut tools and the legs are concentric. For the mouth, I start with a quad ball, sculpt it, then add some surface details. For those details, first I draw some straight lines on the YZ plane, then project them to the surface of the quad ball, turn them into pipe forms, combine them and move it to the proper location. And because this is a top water lure, so I have to hollow out the inside of this model. What I have is this core. Uh, to do this, first thinking was to use this shell feature, but the, uh, the surface of this model is too complicated. And Fusion is not going to be able to create the shell out of this model. So what I did was I went back to the beginning of the project when everything is simple. So I just have a few forms and the shapes are simple. So I create the core from these shapes. So to make core for each body, I make a copy first and then create shell out of that body and subtract the shell from the body to get the core. And I repeat this three times to get the core for each body. And then I combine those cores to get the main core for this model, which is a workaround because uh, like I said earlier, the model is too complicated for Fusion to just create that shell from that body. So I have to go back to the beginning of the time when everything is simple and create core from there. Once I have the core, I then combine with the body using the cut operation to take the core out. And here's the cross section analysis. And also I add this path through for the through wire. 
All right, there you have it. The design phase is completed. Let's move on to the printing phase. For this model, because there's some fine details, so I think resin printer is a better choice. Here I'm using the Chiru box to slice the model. I have to say there's some learning curve for me. Basically, you have to position the model in an angle. So when it pulls from the build plate, uh, the pull force will not be as much as if you just place the model flat on the build plate. So I begin with uh, automatic slicing. And then after that, I manually add the support. Whenever I see some red shadow, that means it might cause some problem during printing. So I would add the extra support there. And also when you think you are done, you can um, check if there's any isolated island. Like here I have one, so I have to go back to that layer, figure out where the problem is, and then add support there. I would check again and make sure there's no more island left. My resin printing journey did not start too smoothly. First few prints failed. Then I realized half of the printing screen was defected. I contacted the manufacturer, but they did not want to replace it because I opened the box after the warranty period. Lesson learned. Once I avoided the defected area and ran the calibration tests, tuned the exposure time, etc., the print started to make sense. Trial after trial, finally I got it to print. Yes. You might have noticed the prints look different than the ones that I showed earlier in the design phase. Um, actually, I made a few different designs and this is one of them. Uh, we'll see if we have enough time to squeeze that information in this video because I don't want to make it too much information for you guys to digest.
for the paint job, first I airbrush the whole thing in white for the base color. Then I use the green for the back and dark brown for the tail. Then I move on to the hand painting using the paintbrush. For the belly, I use a dry rub technique for the highlights. I guess I could use a sponge, but the paper towel will give you a more random look. It also brings out the print layers, depending on if you like it or not. I kind of like it, so I didn't try to smooth out the prints before painting. I also tried different color schemes, and I think they all turn out well. For the legs, I'm using some old fly lines and so I make the knot first and then cut to length. For the wings, I'm using a cricket to cut the outlines and then transfer those to a mylar sheet. Let me know if you guys are interested, I can make a video about how I did this in more detail. As you can see, the mylar sheet would try to go back to its original flat shape, so I use a heat gun to change the shape permanently. So I still haven't figured out a good way to secure the wings. I was thinking about using some little screws to screw this into the body, but that might break the wings easily. And so maybe I can use some uh, mono line to, you know, wrap around the body with the wings. But that might 
hinder the hookup. So I'm not sure. So maybe I will just fish without the wings and uh, just put the wings on when it's on the display. All right, let's look at the finished Cicada lures again. I think this should catch some fish, but I will leave that for a later time. Please click that like button if you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions or requests. Also, please subscribe if you have not. I will see you in the next one. Peace!